Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, worshippers of all ages, welcome to YouTube. My name is C-Raptor, and today we are going to bring you a first look at a forthcoming super ship. This is going to be tier, whatever, tier 11. Let's be honest here. They won't admit that, but that's what this is. This is tier 11 British cruiser HMS Edgar. If you're looking at the ship and going, uh, duh, that's a Minotaur, well, you're right. You really are right. Um, if you want the 30-second version, you don't want to sit through the whole thing, you want to want the 30-second version, Edgar's a Minotaur with an extra turret at the stern. That's literally, that's literally as simple as you can boil this ship down. There's some more differences, and we'll talk about those as we go, but like at its core, that's what we're looking at. Now, we can argue the merits of super ships. That's not the point of this video. Um, we can have that conversation elsewhere. I should probably do a video about that, I suppose, at some point, now that we know for a fact they're 100% coming to the game. Not that this should shock anybody. Um, Wargaming has removed the tier designation of the game, right? They refer to these as tier star. But it's tier 11. Like, when you peel away the layers into the code of the game, even the code of the game recognizes these as tier 11 ships. So, Edgar... Um, as a Minotaur lover, and if you've watched the channel, you've seen me on Twitch, or you've explored some of the videos here, you know that I am a huge fan of Minotaur. The ship is silly fun. It is very unique. It's like playing uh, a... I can't, I can't really explain it. It's very seat of your pants. It's very adrenaline-inducing. And then every now and then, you get slapped off the board, and you have a good laugh, and you go on to your next game. But in between, you are an absolute agent of chaos, just ruining destroyer players' games and days, and it is oh, it is a thing of beauty. And Edgar, well, Edgar is more of same. Um, most of the tier 11, the super ships, seem to be kind of taking what the tier 10 does and turning it up a notch. Edgar is absolutely that. So let's talk about the ship. Let's peel away the layers, get into the numbers, and talk about her. Obviously, can't show you gameplay, but we can go through the thing important and have a look. Starting at the top, like you do with survivability, 49,900 hit points. Now, I'm not going to spend a lot of time in this video comparing Edgar to other Tier 10 cruisers because she doesn't really have a good basis of comparison. For starters, there aren't that many Tier 10 light cruisers, and none of them do what this ship does. I'm going to spend most of my time comparing this ship to Minotaur. Minotaur has been out for a while, so if you're used to playing a Minnow or you've seen one in-game, you have a pretty good idea what you're up against. I'm going to highlight where this ship differs from Minotaur, okay? So, hit points, 49,900. This is um, about, well, I didn't run the percentage numbers. It's, it's about 7,000 more hit points than Minotaur has, almost exactly 7,000 more hit points. Now, you're laughing because for a ship that eats citadels as badly as Minotaur does, that's like, what, one more citadel? Do you really care? Or, or if you cake enough citadels, that extra damage, that'll just get, you know, just go away. But it does make a difference because some players will take their, their Minotaur or their Edgar and they'll add survivability expert. So this here, you know, you're getting, you're getting, you're starting with more health, you're adding more health with survivability expert. And of course, if you go that route or you take the India Delta flag, your heal gets that much more potent and you have a larger health pool to start with. So your heal already starts just that much more potent. So this is noteworthy, right? Um, one of the things about Minotaur's players, veteran Minotaur players is you can always tell them because they, they know when to stop shooting. They know how to manage their health. And they know the kinds of shenanigans usually they can and can't get out of. And putting a ship like this in the tool, in a tool like this in the hands of a player who knows what they're up to, I'm not saying that's me, but I've met, I've seen some of these guys in game. Um, it's going to be brutal. It's going to be brutal. The ship's going to do silly things. 10% torpedo protection um, is actually a little worse than Minotaur. I mean, Minotaur, but Minotaur only has 13%, so it's not like it's that big a deal. Um, ship has hydro. So normally when you're dealing in a situation where you expect to find torpedoes, you have your hydro up. I don't expect this to be a big concern. Armor layout. Minotaur, of course, is absolutely known for having paper thin armor. And she does. B essentially any ship at tier 10 can almost guarantee to citadel the thing through her broadside armor. I'm exaggerating, of course. There are some destroyers that can't do it, but honestly, there's a lot of destroyers that can, okay? And then, of course, anything from, like, a light cruiser on up can easily citadel uh, this ship with their AP, or at least uh, a Minotaur. Edgar is basically the same, okay? The belt armor, such as it is, is only 102 millimeters, so I've got a 4-inch belt at best. Um, the citadel arrangement is a little different from Minotaur, and I'm going to point this out because it's important, I think, to understand, and it might... I don't know, I'm not testing the ship, but it might 
impact how she plays a little differently. If you remember Minotaur, Minotaur's citadel is raised in the center and runs along the exterior skin of the ship, essentially between the turrets. So if you hit a Minotaur right at the waterline, pretty much anywhere between the turrets, you are, you are hitting the citadel wall, right? Right into it. Edgar is not quite that. Let me peel away some of these layers and show you what I'm talking about. Oop, too far. So you can see here, if you hit the ship between the superstructure and the aft stack, you're absolutely getting that. Let me give you the top-down version, right? This is the Citadel wall, right here along the edge of the ship. So if you land shells amidships, yeah, you're going to Citadel her. And of course, it is st still a very raised Citadel. I'm trying to get down to the water here to kind of give you an idea, but yeah, there we go. So again, you can see that the, there's a noteworthy portion of the Citadel that sits well above the water. But Edgar's magazines are a little better protected than Minotaur. Now, again, this is a minor distinction, but it's worth pointing out. If I put the torpedo bulges back on here, okay, you can see that around the magazines, Edgar has that that spaced armor that we're used to seeing on some of the French schemes and some of the other cruisers up here up here have it. All right, such that I've got this four inch kind of outer wall, an air gap, and then uh, then my thirty two inch uh, sorry thirty two millimeter um, inner wall here on on the the, uh, the Citadel bulkhead. So. Is this going to make a huge difference? I don't think so. I don't think it's going to make a huge difference. But it, there, it, what it does mean is there might be the occasional shell at longer ranges, something that's kind of trying to plunge in that might get trapped in this air gap and not actually or not actually hit the citadel, or potentially if the angle is steep enough, ricochet off the citadel if it's coming in like again like a plunging fire shell at long range. And again, that's only around the magazines. Okay, so. If you're hitting this thing amidships, it's going to get slapped just like a Minotaur, unquestionably, because that's where the Citadel wall is, right on the edge of the ship. Maneuverability and concealment, 34 knots, 730 on the turning circle, 11.3 on the rudder shift. Each of these is, well, the, the turning circle and the rudder shift each are about 10% worse than Minotaur. So she she's going to handle slightly worse. And, and that makes sense, right? In order to accommodate the extra turret, Edgar has a longer overall length than Minotaur. You would expect her to handle a little worse, and the numbers bear that out. The one, the one place that doesn't hold out is the speed. This is a half knot faster than Minotaur. Um, that's nice, but at the same time, when there's destroyers up here that do 45 knots or better, you're not going to be able to run down everybody and that's just the way it is i mean this ship is tailor built to be a destroyer hunter in in her radar configuration and we'll get to that in a minute so a lot of tier 10 destroyers you know you can absolutely you could actively hunt but there are going to be the ones that they're going to look at you push their speed boost and they are just going to gtfo and you're going to be looking at the rooster tail behind their fantail as they bail away from you and there's nothing you can do about it you can't catch them with that speed 12.1 detection on the surface. I did remove her permanent camo here. She does come with a perma camo, but I wanted to give you her base detection. That is a little worse than Minotaur. A full stealth rig, Edgar gets down to 9.5 surface detection. That is four tenths of a kilometer, 400 meters worse than Minotaur. And she does have the same radar radius. So what does that mean? Minotaur's radar range and when you take a radar Minotaur, is 10 kilometers, okay? Um, and she has a 9.1 detection. You have nearly a full kilometer of range you can bait an opposing destroyer into. Suddenly you're spotted, you push your little I can see you button, and bam, that guy's got a ways to go to get out of your radar range, depending on the angle and how the closing, you know, where he is and where you are and how you're moving in relation to each other. Edgar's window is, is about half that. It's only 500 meters, okay? So it means that enemy destroyers they will be inside your radar radius when they spot you, but it will be a smaller gap than with Minotaur. So, um, which is encouraging, I'll say, if I'm the destroyer player, because again, Minotaurs are already worse, already bad enough for me to deal with, and this ship is decidedly worse for me to deal with. And we'll talk about that now as we head over to look at the main battery. Edgar's main battery is comprised of the exact same turrets, guns, and shells as Minotaur. As mentioned earlier, we simply add an extra one. I've got the, the uh, three bow turrets. You're used to seeing this configuration on Minotaur. Only one of these turrets is super firing. Now, Minotaur's stern usually has the super firing turret and a single one on the deck. Edgar here adds this, uh, this extra turret all the way back here, a Z turret, I suppose, um, that then handles, handles things, okay? So with six guns, what's the other difference? The reload. The reload. 
Minotaur's base reload is four seconds. You see here, Edgar gets that down even further to 3.2 seconds. The shell, the shell velocities are the same. It's the same, it's the exact same gun and gun ballistic you're used to playing on Minotaur. 16 and a half kilometer range is a little better than Minotaur. Minotaur, stop, Minotaur caps out at 15.8. And then consequentially, the dispersion you see there, 147, that's just a little farther along the curve because you're a little farther out at max range. So she has the same dispersion ellipse as Minotaur. She has the same guns, the same shells, the same ballistics. She has a little more range, more guns, and better reload. The AP damage, uh, the, the numbers work out thus. At max, uh, a ma the max DPM of a um, a Minotaur, right? Full. If again, this is assuming every shell is a Citadel, which is ridiculous. Okay, but the full maximum potential AP of her guns at you know full broadside, firing everything, four hundred eighty thousand AP DPM. Edgar here, fifty percent higher, seven hundred and twenty thousand DPM. Of course, that is pure theoretical. That's just math, but it gives you a sense of the additional firepower that you're getting. You're getting more guns on a faster reload. So destroyers you catch out, ships you catch out with these guns have even less time before they start melting than they did against a Minotaur. Now, the difference is, is that, hey, you're not exactly, you know, you are the definition of a glass cannon, but they have, you know, they will melt even faster than they did uh, versus her tier 10 counterpart. Reasonable, honestly, given that you're what you're paying for this ship and the fact that it's one tier, it's essentially one tier higher. Um, torpedo armament. Um, basically the same. I've got, uh, basically, there's a difference, but I'll point it out. Um, I've got a pair of quadruple launcher, uh, quadruple tube launchers amidships on each side of the ship. On a 96 second reload with a, uh, torpedoes, you can see there the 16,700 alpha, 62 knots, 1.3 kilometers, all 1.3 kilometers, uh, d detection range. Every single one of those numbers is the same as Minotaur, except the torpedo range. Edgar gets... 12 kilometers range on her on these torpedoes. Minotaur has the exact same torpedo, the exact same reload and everything. Her range is only 10 kilometers. So what that means is, you know, there are times uh, as a Minotaur player, in a ra certainly a radar Minotaur player, that once you've assassinated the opposing destroyers, you can flex those torpedoes and you can be the destroyer, right? Because you have more torpedo range than you have, than you have a visibility range. Edgar amps that up even further because you have now two and a half kilometers more torpedo range than detection range, whereas with Minotaur, it's only about a kilometer or so. She does have depth charges. She's got, uh, looks like, three bombs and a charge on a couple. Now, these, if memory serves, I was looking at this a minute ago, she's got, yep, she's got this uh, kind of hedgehog launcher kind of through the deck back here. The only other place I remember seeing one of these, I believe, is on... I want to say Druid, Druid, Vampire, Vampire might have one of these. I'd have to go look, but yeah, so like this is a, this is a thing the Brits and the Aussies were using kind of uh, post-war to, to dump out the hedgehogs and, um, and Edgar has one too. So there you go. If you find yourself in a situation, you get to use those. Congratulations. You are, you have found the unicorn of World of Warships. Anti-aircraft defenses. Now, Minotaur is known for her AA. Despite the fact that she does not have access to the defensive fire consumable, her base AA levels are arguably among the best in the game, if not the best. The same tradition continues here with Edgar, starting on the back of the dual-purpose main battery guns. You see there, all of the main battery guns are dual-purpose. They count here for the AA, which means that her outer bubble, which goes out to 6.9 kilometers, she puts up seven flak puffs, pretty nice that is one more flak puff by the way the minotaur so she has a slightly more effective uh flak a uh, flak barrage out to 154 dpm at max range again because you're getting the extra the extra barrels in the dual purpose battery this is about a uh, i'd say about a 15 percent increase over uh over what minotaur has minotaur's outer bubble puts up 133 dps and and of course you can see there edgar puts up 154 but the real beef here is in the mid-range aura look at that mid-range aura for starters 560 dps is pretty solid like that's those are you're getting up towards battleship numbers there for mid-range but the range on that aura i want you to look at that five kilometers out for a mid-range dps bubble that is best in the game no other ship in the game has a mid-range aura this large in fact, there are ships, and I'm looking at you, the Red Game Arena, whose long-range anti-aircraft aura doesn't go out to five kilometers. Thanks, Wargaming. So, yikes, right? Yikes. When you put some points into this aura, 
this thing is going to melt planes in a way that carrier like just will make carrier players cry. And I admit, I love building my Minotaur for full AA. I'm one of those psychopathic crazies that will put the AA module into slot six on my Minotaur specifically so I can melt planes faster. Because admittedly, one of the weaknesses of these ships is being spotted on the surface by battleships at long range because they're going to take pot shots at you and anything that they hit, hit you're going to feel. So the faster you can kill the planes that are spotting you, that's a good thing. And if there's no planes in the game, well, you know what? That's a win for you too. But yes, the Aeora here gets even better than Minotaurs and Minotaurs is already quite, quite solid. You see here the little 762 guns. These are apparently a, a design development on the 762s that make up Minotaurs mid-range because, yeah, these things are just nasty. Absolutely nasty. And then, uh, last but not least, let's have a look at consumables. Just like a Minotaur, well, like, like any ship in World of Warships, I have damage control party. I get the fancy British heel. I have access to five kilometer hydro. And then, just like Minotaur, I have a choice between smoke and surveillance radar. 10 kilometer radar, 40 second duration, two minute cooldown. This is exactly the same consumables arrangement you get aboard Minotaur. Okay? Um, me, I like to play Radar Minnow because I like trolling destroyer players. I mean, I love playing destroyer, but I mean, I also like I also like trolling destroyers, right? So to me, this is how I'll probably play the ship, but there will be people that prefer the smoke, and that's cool. You know, you do you, um, but it's the exact same consumables loadout. The last thing worth mentioning while we're here and we can see the details is because she is a super ship, Edgar gets a fancy burst fire mode. Like most, I think all the other super ships that aren't carriers have, have some kind of fancy alternate firing mode here. In Edgar's case, what it does is um, every 30 seconds, nominally, I can I can I can use this ability, and four and uh, in one in uh, basically I get four salvos a second and a half uh, on a sec 1.5 second reload. So what that means is that um, I get um, six salvos, um, sorry, four salvos in six seconds uh, of 50 percent extra damage and 100 percent extra armor penetration. So the shell damage then would go from 3,200 up to 15, 16, 4,800 a shell, and uh, the armor penetration would go up. This is the kind of thing that if you ever catch a destroyer out broadside with your radar or your hydro, maybe he's camped in smoke and you rush him in hydro and you want to just assassinate him, that's the what I look at this button as. This is your assassinate destroyer button, right? That's pretty much the way I, the way I look at this thing. So, so yeah, um, this ship is absolutely going to be a holy terror against destroyers when you see one of these in a game and you're playing a destroyer you need to be very very cautious until a you know where he is and b you know whether or not he is radar or smoke pay very close attention because otherwise this guy can you, you know, positioning dependent of course but if you're not careful this guy will melt you in literally seconds that's how nasty he can be with that burst fire mode anyway guys there is our first look at Super Ship Tier 11, British Cruiser HMS Edgar. Hope you enjoyed that. Wash your hands. Be safe. I'll catch you next time.